Right, time for another death match. Um, our current champion and new champion are, is this fellow, the uh, Flesh Stalker from well, out of space somewhere, but the Devilic ship. Uh, only a large. We've been usually using XLs, but yeah, it's only a large. Packs a big punch for, for a relatively little guy. Um, yeah, he deposed the living statue, so he is now on his home turf in the derelict ship. Uh, this week, I received the revised core sets. They've only just come out this week in UK retail, and as a consequence, I thought I'd use one of the um, Harbingers of Goliaths that I've previously not been able to use because I didn't know the new rules. Um, I went for the Harbinger to start with. Maybe next time we'll, we'll try Goliath. So it's the old model. Um, I haven't um, made up the new model yet. I mean, it's been a week. Give me a chance. So we'll be having the Harbinger versus the Flash Talker. I must admit, I actually now having seen the stats of the Harbinger, it hasn't actually much changed for the basic non-elite, non-brutal Harbinger. It is, it is much the same. Um, there's, it's all in the elite abilities where most of the changes. It's slightly changed its health to scale with heroes. Um, but other than that, no much change. One thing I do have though is when previously when they realised that things like the Harbinger and some of the older base set um, enemies were not as challenging, uh, some of the later sets they produce these 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 traits and there's there's five of them like that. Um, I haven't actually used any of them because I've not faced a Harbinger yet since. Um, since I got these. Um, so let's see what we've got. Maybe we'll take the top one. What have we got? We've got Blistering Touch. So uh, the Harbinger's double its base health. Wow. Okay. Um, so it's got its double its base health and to hit rolls of six or more also add D3 burning markers to the target. Okay. Uh, any hero that starts their activation adjacent to the Harbinger must pass an agility 5 or more or take 3 hits that do 2 damage each. Well, that's not going to bother the Flesh Stalk because it's got a defense of 4. I must admit, I'm now looking at this and seeing that the Harbinger actually technically, on its base attacks, can't hurt the Flesh Stalk because it's actually got a defense of 4. Harbinger's only got a damage of 4. Um, but now, obviously, it's got this blistering touch ability. You can possibly, possibly burn the Flesh Stalker to death. Um, meanwhile, the Flesh Doctor going back the other way, uh, it, it's got a damage of 3 versus the Harbinger's defensive flick. So it's not going to be able to do any hit attacks that do any damage normally. Only if it rolls a 6 when it does double damage is its normal attacks going to hit the Harbinger. They're both going to be looking for 6s in this fight. Anything else doesn't matter. The externalities of the fight, though, the Flesh Doctor is sitting on 27 hits. The the Harbinger is now sitting on 31. That made a huge difference. It was originally like 17, now it's 31. That's a huge amount of hit, extra health there. Um, the Flesh Talk, of course, has this ability we've seen before, that Shadow Shift, so at the end of its combat, or if the Harbinger does too much damage in an attack, which doesn't look like it's going to happen, um, it will Shadow Shift. And if it Shadow Shifts through the Harbinger, it will deal damage through defense and armor. To the Harbinger. That's how the Flesh Doctor did most of its damage versus that living statue. Uh, on the flip side, the Harbinger's abilities are uh, it's at the end, of, it's immune to critical hits. We don't actually have anything that is what I'd count as a critical hit. We've kind of mentioned this in some of the comments. Uh, basically, I'm treating a critical hit as, as literally if the enemy stat block says if you roll a six, you ignore defense because, because that's what a crit is. Um, that's going to come into play here. Um, it's bringer of death ability is at the end of each turn, roll d6 and something happens on a one, two, one or two, you get a sweeping strike, it does a bunch of extra combat hits to each, everything adjacent to it. Previously it wouldn't really do that much, but now we've got a blistering touch. That is, um, you know, that, that could set the flesh dog on fire even more. Um, could summon some hellbats. So I've got the hellbats card here ready. There you go, hellbats. Um, I don't think they're going to be very effectual because they've only got a different damage of one. Um, but what they may do is distract some of the Flesh Stalker's attacks away from the from the Harbinger. Uh, um, 
So I, I mean, technically, it, I mean, it depends what the it depends what the where the flesh docker ends up and its random movement and what tools or trades it uses. But obviously, as per normal sort of enemy movement rules, it will target the harbinger first, and then it will stay on the harbinger until something happens to change that. It doesn't have any of the shifting targets like like flight or or, or what have you. Oh, it does. Moves through other models and changes targets each turn. Um, okay, so so it may, yeah, so it may end up wasting its attacks on hell bats. Uh, and then the final thing that the harvest can do, if it rolls a 5 or 6, it regenerates d6 wounds. Um, I think, yeah, until we got that blistering touch, and I don't know what other traits are in there, we'll have a look later, but if you hadn't got the blistering touch, the harvest just was not going to be able to touch the flesh dropper at all, so this would be like a very one-sided fight. But thanks to that blistering touch, it may just continually set the flesh stalker on fire, whilst what damage the flesh stalker gets through, it regenerates potentially, and wastes its attacks on the on the health bats. Um, okay, so if I'm going to call it, who do I think is going to win this fight? Um, you know what? I'm going to stick with the flesh stalker. I always tend to prefer the the, the reigning champ. I'm going to stick with the flesh stalker. So let's get this fight underway. Um, we roll 2d6 to see what the Flesh Talker's initiative is each turn. So in this, it's a 9, so it goes first. Tools of Trade. What Tool of Trade are we going to get? Tool of Terror, sorry. What Tool of Terror are we going to get? Let's take that one. It is... Oh, I've not seen this one. Uh, Fear Caster. This turn, the Flesh Talker's Terror is replaced with Unspeakable Terror. Not so relevant. Also... Uh, here is Jason the Fleshhawk about to make an attack must pass a willpower save or lose that attack hmm how are we going to do that given it's, uh, it's uh, you know what I'm going to be I'm going to be kind given, I'm going to be kind given that is really specific here I'm going to put that on the side and let's not draw that ever again let's draw another one in a death match because that's just that is basically a wasted tool of terror for the um for the Flash Stalker. Let's go with this one. What's this one? This one is Shock Prod. Okay. At the end of the move this turn, Flash Stalker attacks all adjacent heroes. Anytime a hero takes one or more wounds from the Flash Stalker this turn, they gain a stunned marker. Okay, so it's going to start trying to stun the Harbinger. So, yeah, we'll move to come into. Let's just check. Yeah, move to come into melee combat. It's getting around the outside. Melee combat with the Harbinger. Shock Prod. So, uh, so yeah, so we attack all, so that's four dice, and we're going to need a six to do any damage. Um, we've got one six, so we do six damage, less the defensive is three wounds, but also a, so that's in this one, also a Stunned token on the Harbinger. Uh, now, reaching for some of the rules. Uh, stunned. There we go. Stunned. So, at the start of activation, that's what I was checking, is at the start of activation. So, there we go, we've ended the combat with the Ghost Talkers, we're going to do its shadow shift. Um, as before, we'll have that as your one direction on your D8. Three, one, two, three. Uh, can't go there because that's in the blocked off. I've helped it there, haven't I, by choosing this piece of train? That's in the train you can't get to. Six, six. Okay, goes there, and then seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can't go seven, so it just basically stays there on that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was trying to turn it around, but made a blunder. There we go. So they go, they're just there fighting each other. So I didn't actually move through, through it with the um, shadow shift that turn. So it then goes to the Harbinger's first turn. So we try and get rid of the stunned token. It does not. So we then do its attacks, which is 
da, da, da. so you have three. Again, looking for sixes. No sixes, so the harbinger does nothing. Uh, we then get to the end of the turn. We then roll these six to see which of those special abilities the harbinger does. Uh, it summons some hellbats. We have peril dice hellbats. We add four hellbats. One, two, one. So many wings. One, two, three, four. Too many wings. There we go. All basically surrounding the. There we go. Surrounding the flesh dogger. Uh, that was the end of the turn. Start the next turn. What initiative is the Flesh Stalker on? It's on eight, so it's going to go first. Oh, we have to do this down first, don't we? Because sometimes what you roll on the initiative matters. Yeah. So, oops, I'm shot, probably should shuffle back in. So, this turn, the Tool of Terror is a Slave Pulse. Uh, Any who starts activation adjacent to a flesh dog must turn us past a spirit six or more to resist the mind control of the slave force or lose their activation. Okay, that's going to be hard given we're giving everyone only a skill of one, but we'll see. So the flesh dog activates. Who is it going to attack? It's got five choices. So we roll d6 on a one, two, three, or four. It's, I suppose you should do it properly. So one, two, three, four, five, two. So it's going with that hell back. So it doesn't need to move, it just needs to turn, which we can't do because we're boxed in by wings. But yeah, we're attacking that Hellbat this turn. Um, and so yeah, so it will attack with its four dice. Funnily enough, it's hit four times, doing more. Each one is more than enough damage to kill a Hellbat. So yeah, that Hellbat dies. Then it shadow shifts. Seven can't go seven. Two, so it shadow shifts there to where this hellbat is, which is just going to explode it because it's only got one health after defense. Doesn't matter what the roll is. So they go kill that hellbat by moving there. One more move. Eight, eight swaps. Oh, this is going to get tricky. Swaps with the harbinger. Like that. In this case, we didn't have to move that one. So the Harbinger takes d6. One. It takes one wound. Like that. But it's still got some ablative hell that's left. Um, so that was, that was the uh, Flesh Stalker's turn. The hell bats then go. The hell bat, hell bat moves in there, I guess. Uh, that hell about skips a turn, that does nothing because it, it can't really do much. Uh, it's then the Harbinger. Does the Harbinger skip its turn because of the Slave Pulse? It does. Right, this is at the end of the turn. It's not on its activation though. So at the end of the turn, what special attack does it do? Just number four, summons another Heraldized Hellbat. Summons three Hellbats. See where this is going. This this may be an absolute stalemate. This way. So one, two, three hellbats now completely surrounding that flesh stalker. Okay. Okay. Right. So that was round two. Round round three. Oh, we need to see if we got rid of the stun. Do we get rid of the stun? We did not. This time we've got flesh shears. Again, it's it's entirely to do with terror. Should I really be letting the those? You know, but no. I'm going to put that aside as well. I think I, I may have in the past let it had a dud turn, but we're going to be here forever if I do that. So let's actually have a tool of terror that we can use. Okay. 
Uh, flesh harvesting syringe. Whenever the flesh stalker shadow shifts into a space where hero this and they take peril dice damage instead of d6, and the flesh stalker heals peril dice wounds. Um, yeah, that's not even wounded, so it doesn't really matter about that, but it's going to take a bit more damage wherever it goes. So, what is the flesh stalker's initiative? 11. Flesh stalker gets to go first. Who's it going to attack? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5. So, it's going for the hellbat at the back. Doesn't have to move, does four dice, uh, gets a hit, so it kills it. Um, Hell back down. Shadow shift. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't go six. Four, can't go. F oh, yeah, no, can go four. So moves there. One, uh, can't go one. Can't go one. Oh, no, can go one. There is a space there. So moves to there. Swaps with the Harbinger. Way too many models, all too big wings all over the place. And it swaps to there. Harbinger take peril dice. Take four. Okay. Right. Hellbats get to move, so they just crowd around as best they can. That one technically is in there. That one there. Attack for no effect. Harbinger attacks. Free attacks. Need sixes. Didn't get any sixes. Gets to the end of the turn. Harbinger special attack. There's <laughs> more hell bats. <laughs> Free hell bats. Okay, right. Now here we are. Out of Hellbats. I mean, if I've made the new Hellbats, uh, move Death Trap forward one space. Can't. I'm not really using that. Okay, so. Well. Uh, that was the end of turn. Well, it start a new turn. And we do Tool of Terror. It's the harvesting syringe again. Mischief is five, less than the hellbats. Hellbats do their attacks, do nothing. Flesh talker, I need to roll a D8 now, don't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the harbinger. Five, one, two, three, attack the one that's already next to it. Four dice. Oh, uh, yeah, kills it. So, maybe we'll just do that. <laughs> one hellbat dead. Harbinger, three attacks. Oh, does it get rid of the stunned? It does. Three attacks. A six! We have set the... Let's find a burning. There we go. We have set the Flesh Stalker. Oh, oh D3, don't we? Yeah, we've set the Flesh Stalker on fire. For one. Finally. Um, then we get to the end of the turn. The... Oh, we didn't do the shadow shift, so let's do the shadow shift. Um, two kills that hell that. Three kills that hell that. Seven kills that hell that. And then the harbinger would have pushed that one out of the way so it could attack. There we go. So that was three hell bats dead just due to shadow shift. Right. But then the Harbinger attack, set it on fire. End of turn, special ability from Harbinger is a four. Summon yet more Hellbats. How many? Six. Well, we can't do six. Two, three, four. There we go, as good as we can do. Uh, so that's the end of the turn. Just need to remind myself when burning occurs. Staff activation, take two, ignoring defense. Yeah. Yeah, so it takes, it removes one per turn and takes two damage. So, neutral power.
this will tear this time is the syringe once again. Oh yes, and of course the burning mark goes to wounds. I can see what this is going to happen. It's going to move through a hell and heal, isn't it? Almost certainly. So uh, once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How about six at the time? Five hits that hell back there. Swings at it four times. Kills it. Shadow shifts eight. Uh, yes, swaps with the Harbinger. Swaps with the Harbinger. Who takes five wounds? That's quite a thing. Like that. And the Flesh Stalker heals all of its wounds because it can't get less than three. Okay. Uh, I guess then gets mobbed by Hellbats, who attack for no damage whatsoever because they can't. Oh no, still doing more shadow shifts, aren't I? Most of over all the way over Ugh, so many things going on. Five, one, two, three, four, five kills that Hellbat. And then uh, six to there. And then gets mobbed by Hellbats. which attack for no damage, then the Harbinger steps up and attacks. Three damage, three combat, no sixes, so not on fire. End of the turn, what's the special ability on the Harbinger? Summon Hellbats. <laughs> uh, yeah, summons all the Hellbats, all the Hellbats come back. That one's technically on that square there. Anyway. Uh, start a new turn, new tool of terror. Slave pulse. Well, isn't that going to be fun? So, uh, half is a one, two, three, four, five, six. Just goes for that one. Uh, hits and kills it. And then shadow shifts to kill that one. Seven brings it back to where it is. Four to there to kill that one. Uh, Hellbats then basically move into mob it, but they can't do any damage. The Harbinger needs to make the Slave Pulse roll. It doesn't, so it doesn't attack. We go to the end of the turn, the Harbinger's special ability is regenerate. It heals D6 wounds. It heals two wounds. Okay, next round. Um, Tools of Terror. Time Splicer. So when it activates, not only is initiative, but each different on the dice. And it gets a seven. So it goes on seven before the hell bats. Uh, one, two, three, four. Three, so it's going to go for that one. Four attacks. Uh, only one hit, but only does need one hit to kill it. So it kills that one then. Uh, making its combat attack, so it goes one, swaps with the Harbinger. There we go, we can just about get it in. So with the Harbinger, doing d6 this time, doing one wound. Six, one, two, three, can't go six. Four, can't go four. Initiative six, it's the Hellbats and the Flesh Stalker. So we do the Flesh Stalker first. Um, so it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, I guess I'm going to say. Two. Moves to attack that Hellbat. Four dice. Kills it. Shadow shift. Seven. Six. Uh, can't go six again. So it ends up there on six. The Hellbat just turns around trying to 
bite it, can't because it's going to go off damage. And then the Harbinger turns around and attacks. Three dice. No, it doesn't get a six, so it doesn't do any damage like that. Uh, then the Flesh Stalker goes on one. Um, so odds, evens, odds, attacks the Harbinger. Uh, gets a six, so does free damage. Five. With two, three damage. Fifteen out of our uh, thirty-one. Halfway there. Then time. That's how then does its shadow shift. Uh, can't go there. Can't go there. Can't go there. Stay where it is. End of the turn. Harbinger's special ability is to regenerate d6 wounds. I think we can see which way this is going. He's like the flesh has barely taken anything. Um, in, you know, it's like the harbinger needs to land a good hit and get a load of burning tokens on, but it's just not happened. Um, all right, so start the new turn. We've got a slave pulse once again. So initiative is four. Hellback goes, doesn't it? Uh, flesh talker goes. Odds evens. Takes the hell back. Yeah, kills it. Shadow shifts to there. Swaps with the harbinger. This wounds is one wound. Harbinger, does it make it spirit check? It does not. End of turn. Summons Peril Dice Hellbats. Three. Start a new turn. Slave Pulse once again. Uh, Harbinger, sorry, Flesh Talker's initiative is 8. Flesh Talker goes first. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Tax. Harbinger. Doesn't get any 6s. Shadow Shift. Can't go, can't go there. 4. Kills that one. 4. Eight kills that one. And that's interesting. It's now moved away from the harbinger, so the harbinger will get an activation. Uh, Pelbat comes up, does not mean harbinger steps up, does three attacks. Any sixes? No, no sixes. So end of the turn. Special ability is sweeping strike. Uh, so it takes d6 combat hits from the harbinger. So it takes two extra combat hits. No sixes. Start my new turn. Go with this one. It's the time splicer again. We're going to get a whole bunch of activations. Seven again. So seven, six, and one. Seven um, attacks, odds, evens. Attacks the harbinger. No sixes. Shadow slices. Three swaps with the harbinger. Doing three damage. Back up to fifteen. Then move there. Then moves there. Okay. Um, then on sixes, may as well do the flesh stalker. Odds evens. Steps up to attack a harbinger. No sixes. Shadow shifts. Two. To there. 
7, back to there. 8. I say swaps with the Harbinger. Who's going to have to push the hell back out of the way? Harbinger takes 5 this time, 20. Right, that was 6. Hellback does nothing. Uh, Harbinger attacks. Three dice. Gets a six. Sets the uh, flesh talker back on fire again. Uh, flesh talker gets one last attack this turn. This turn. Uh, odds evens. Odds attacks the harbinger. No sixes. Shadow shift kills that hellbat. Uh, yeah, that's a swap. Does five. And then can't go there, so done. End of a turn, Harbinger's special attack is to regenerate D6 wounds. Regenerate six. Okay, start of the turn. Burns. Yeah, two out of twenty-seven. Slave pulse again. Uh, so initiative is twelve. Uh, deadly turns around. Attacks the harbinger. Four dice. One six, which does free damage. Uh, and then shadow shifts. Two. Moving away from the harbinger again. Now one, three. So the harbinger will get its activation. So the harbinger will then obviously try and chase. Oops, try and chase them down. Like that. Then we'll attack. A six. Sets on fire again. And end of the turn. Six. Heals deep, so it's going to heal d6 wounds. Heals five. Okay, start the next turn. Burns again. Go with this one. Gilly Sword. Plus one combat while adjacent to the Flesh Stalker this turn. Any heroes to hit rolls of one cause d6 wound to that hero instead. Ignoring defense. Right, okay. Flesh Dogger's initiative is 11. So the Flesh Dogger has five combat this turn. No sixes. Shadow shift. Can't go to direction one. Still can't go to direction one. Uh, can go to seven, which is a swap. So, five wounds. Uh, Harbinger, three dice, looking to not roll a one on any of these. Didn't, but did roll six, so sets Flesh Dwarf on fire again. Uh, end of turn special ability is a five. Heal these six. Heals three this time. Okay, start the next turn. Burning disappears. Two wounds on the Flesh Stalker. Let's see what the Tool of Terror is. I'm realising I've done two on there, which I haven't rolled D3. So let's see what those D3s have been each time. Okay, so there should be another two. It's D3. It's not one burning, it's D3. There we go. Tool of Terror is the Slave Pulse once again. Um, Initiative five, still just beating the harbinger. Three attacks, four attacks, four attacks. It's the, come, it's the flesh stalker. No sixes. Shadow shift. Eight can't go to direction eight. One can't go to direction one. Six. 
can go to six, which takes them away once again. So a slow pass doesn't work. Um, so yeah, and the harbinger steps up for uh, three, three dice attack. No sixes. End of turn special attack. It'll four, so peril dice hellbats appear. Four. Packed in with hellbats there. Start my next turn. Burning disappears. Two boons. Uh, Tool of Terror. Is a Vavisk Blade. At the end of the move, attacks all adjacent heroes. Anytime they take one or more wounds, they also gain a bleeding. Okay. So initiative of the Flesh Stalker is 10, so it goes first. It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Attacks the first Hellbat. Not that it particularly matters because it's going to attack everybody. So yeah, the first Hellbat um, is hit and so dies. Let's do the Hellbat. The next Hellbat is hit and so dies. The next Hellbat is hit and so dies. And then the last hellback is hit and dies. Okay, so it then gets its attack with the blade against the harbinger. No sixes, so it doesn't get to put the bleeding token on. Uh, but it might do if it shadow it's still might do if it shadow shifts because it wasn't just that attack, it's if it just takes minutes. So shadow shift two moves up, six moves back, seven moves over to there, oh no, seven, so it couldn't have moved six from there, could it? No, seven moves it to there, there we go, um, so yeah, didn't didn't hit with the blade, right, so harbinger attacks, three dice, looking for sixes, no, no sixes, end of turn special ability, summon some more hellbats, Five Hellbats. Ablative Chaff, as we like to call them. Two, three, four, five. Okay, start the turn. Burns. Goes to ten. Tool of, oop, tool of Terror. Here's the Varus Blade again. Um, so it doesn't particularly matter for one. It, I suppose it might do. That one's the six at the end, and then one. So if it does it roll six, it doesn't. Yeah, so it just attacks that one. This one, four attacks. Uh, they all. That's a kill. The red one. It's killed. That one. Gets killed. That one. Gets killed. Oops. And that one gets killed. Okay, we're all over there briefly. Four attacks on the Harbinger, looking for sixes. There is a six, so does free damage. And also puts on a bleeding, minus three health. So we're on 21, effectively 24. Then shadow shifts. Uh, can't go that way. Can't go that way. Can't go that way. So it stays there. Harbinger attacks, three dice. No sixes. Special ability is D6 extra hits. Does four extra attacks. And a have a six, so a bleeding occurs. Not bleeding, a burning occurs. Start my next turn, burning goes away, two damage. Two of terror. Time splicer. So the initiative is seven on fives and twos. So on seven, attacks. There's no shadow ship. Can't go that way. 
Uh, it can't go that way. Can go that way, so he moves over there. On five, attacks again, four dice. No sixes. Shadow shift. Can do that, so swaps. Curiously. Doing five wounds. So we're on 26, 29. Uh, and there was one more there. Can't go there. So that was five. Goes to four. The harbinger attacks. No sixes. Uh, one. The flesh stalker attacks. No sixes. Shadow shift. Can go that way. Can go that way. So, ends up there. End of turn. Harbinger. Rolls one, but it's not adjacent, so doesn't get any attacks off. Next turn. Let's go with this one. It is Slave Pulse. Um, so, initiative is six, goes first, steps up, four attacks, no sixes, shadow shifts, two, yeah, can go there, two, can't go two, four, can't go four, uh, harbinger attacks, gets a six, um, end of turn special ability. Oh, I had to see. I had to see. It's going to summon some Hellbats, but I had to see if it got the spirit check. Is the spirit check successful? No, it's not. So that, that didn't help. Um, so in the meantime, we get six Hellbats. There you go, six Hellbats appear. Start the next turn. Slice it on five and six, so 11, five, 11, six, five. On 11, I need the d8 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the hard one. Three, one, two, three, go attacks that one. So pushes that one out of the way to get there. Then does four dice attack on it. And that one, yes, kills that one. Then shadow shifts. Three there. Oops. Three can't go to three. Six can go to six, which is back there. Okay, on six, we were doing the flesh stalker first. Let's do the flesh stalker. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six is the harbinger. Two goes for that one, which we're already standing next to. So Kills it. Shadow shifts. To there. To there. To, to there. Okay, I realize you can't actually see much of that because of the wings. Very sorry about that. It's a huge giant amount of wings. Basically it's been it's been dancing around killing some killing some hell bats. Um, that was six, then five. One, two, three, four, five is the. So one, two, three, that one. Steps up. Four dice. Kills it. Shadow shifts. To there. Back to there. Back to there, killing that one hill back. Okay, so it's now there. Oh, uh, okay, that was six. The Hellbats do their thing. Flash it like that. And, and then the Harbinger. Oh, sorry, that was five. I missed out the Hellbats, never really mind. And then the Harbinger steps up and swings. 
doesn't hit. End of turn. Harbinger takes a swing for six hits. That's better than we've managed before. Any sixes? Three sixes. So one, two, and three. I think it's a bit late, but yeah, okay. Start the turn, burning. Over two wounds. Tools of terror. Here's the ghillie saw. Plus one combat, and if they roll one loss adjacent, they will die. So, initiative is free. So it actually goes before everyone else. So in theory, the hell bats go first. I'll roll them in case they kill themselves. So the red one doesn't kill itself, and the other one doesn't kill itself. Okay. Then the harbinger. Here's another six. Oh, it's D3, isn't it? Hmm, good grief, so I need to do three D sets of D3. Uh, so that's number one, two, three, four, five. Keep forgetting that. Keep forgetting that. Let's get these burnings out. So, so we're on. Right. Which is going to be enough. Just 20... 30. Yeah, it's going to be enough to kill it if we can if we can get through all of those burning markers without getting the the syringe and the harbinger can basically stave off long enough. It can win at this point. Now, where you go, harbinger? I don't see it happening. So that was the harbinger's attack. It is now the flesh talkers four dice attack. There we go. Uh, that is two. Si that's two sixes. So that's six damage. Which is a total of thirty-two. Technically thirty-five because of the bleeding and the harbinger's death. I mean, it's almost as if we called that happening, didn't we? By saying it's finally got to a point where it could, um, if it waited long enough, kill the the flesh stalker. So there we go, that was Flesh Stalker's defence. Took a long time, that. that was a long fight, that. But they do, they're kind of flailing at each other, not being able to do much damage. Um, I think the main lesson I learned is don't use the Harbinger model. Its wings get in the way of everyone being able to see what goes on. Um, I think maybe if that, had, if that had happened earlier, that sort of big attack earlier that dropped what, what ended up being eight... Um, Burning tokens. If you dropped eight burning tokens on earlier, maybe the harbinger could have outlasted it. Because that whole summoning hell bats, which like suck up the heart, the flesh stalkers attacks, that was working for a while. But once they were all dead, the damage just piled up, and it and it wasn't healing that D6 enough. Anyway, the harbinger's gone. It's dust out the airlock, and once again, the champion is the flesh stalker. We shall see how it does in the next fight. Slight addenda. I just realised what I was going to say. I was going to have a look at the other traits because I've not seen them. Would it have stood a better chance with these traits? Because without the burn, blistering touch, it, it wasn't going to be doing any damage at all, and this fight was just pointless. Um, so let's have a look at this one. Screeching roar, double the base health. Yeah, okay. And then the rest of it is to do with holding up with darkness. So that would have been a no. Can't hurt it with that. Uh, Bringer of Armageddon, double base health once again. Comes into an ancient cast spells from the shadow magic. Hmm. Yeah, some of those could have messed up the flesh stalker, so that would have possibly been one. Lashing tail does double the base health again. I guess I'm getting a feeling they all do that. Uh, at the start of its activation, each turn does one hit to a random hero in three spaces. Lashing out of his tail, this hit does two d six damage. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that would have possibly chipped away at the health. And what's this last one? Blasphemous name. The harbinger by triple tripled its base health and gains combat equal to its target's current spirit. Yeah, that's not gonna do anything. So okay, so three out of the five would have turned it into actually being able to hit the flesh door, because that's not too bad. 
that uh, always would have been a very boring fight.